With the bit of magic, a soul, and a corpse, a zombie is born. Zombies can be brain-dead puppets, mindlessly following orders. Or a scheming serial killer that terrorizes a group of friends on Halloween. Either way, over time, they all meet the same fate. Rotting to pieces. They can be held together for a short time. But only the force of a god can truly restore them. All of us chatting with Angel. They notice Patches staring. Patches! Olive tries to give Patches a hug. He manages to dodge it. Olive, you act as though I'm dead or something. B but you are dead. Ugh. Point taken. What are we doing here again? Am I supposed to have a play date with one of your friends? Or perhaps you'd like to take me on my offer to enact some revenge. Jesus Christ, Patches. Duh, you wouldn't hurt anyone, even if you wanted to. Which you don't, because you're a good boy now. And I trust you. <laughs> of course! Uh, anyway, we're all meeting here because Coco has some super good news about the zombies. We just have to w wait until she gets here. Maybe, while we wait, you can say hi to everyone. There's nothing in this world I'd rather do. Yay! All of Hugs Patches. This time successfully, he extends his claws, but is immediately shocked by his collar. Yeah. Uh. Angels avoiding eye contact. It doesn't look like Patches or Angel want to talk to each other. Brownie and Sparky are having a heated conversation. Patches starts eavesdropping. I don't know. A curfew sounds pretty reasonable given this was the second time you got mixed up with the occult. Yeah, but it's not my fault. Now I'm gonna have to dig in the neighbor's trash during the daylight hours. What if you just didn't dig in their trash at all? I would literally rather die, Sparky. I bet your middle class parents don't give a crap where or when you're out. I only go out tonight to howl at the moon and run around. They don't have to worry about the neighbor's trash. You're so poor. Brownie finally notices Patches staring. What are you looking at? Well, I'm looking at you. Isn't that kind of typical when you're talking to some- Brownie grabs Sparky's head and turns it towards Patches. Oh! Hi, Patches. Want to come hang out with us? Brownie sighs. I don't think I really have a choice. Great! We were just talking about our parents and what they think of all the crazy stuff that's happened. Uh, oh, I guess you probably haven't seen your family since the massacre. No. Between being forced out of my body and into the body of an undead cat, 
I didn't have the chance to visit. Not that anyone would be home anyway. How depressing. Not even mommy wants to be around you? My mom has been dead for five years. Uh, that's a joke, right? <laughs> a good one. Brownie, that's so insensitive. Thanks for dredging up memories of my poor dead mother, Brownie. I think I'll go cry in the corner for the remainder of my time here. Sparky pulls Brownie aside to scold her. Hmm. A fire poker would look great in Brownie's skull. But alas, this damned collar prevents me from having any fun. The table is clean. Not a speck of tea, cake, or blood remains from Olive's birthday party. Patches tries to enter the kitchen. Patches, are you a snack boy? Olive pats rapidly on their thighs, calling him towards them in the most demeaning way possible. Stop that this instant! Ah, are you hangry? Olive pulls a bacon biscuit out of the pocket of the overalls. Just because you're not allowed out of my sight, it doesn't mean you can have a treat. Everyone in the room stares at Olive, cheering on Patches to come eat the bacon treat. The attempt to enter the kitchen doesn't seem worth this hassle. Patches ignores Olive and walks away. They end up eating the bacon treat themselves. Patches reaches for the entrance door. P Patches? I am sick of being dragged around by you. We're doing what I want now, and that's going outside. The entrance door flings open and knocks Patches back. Coco and Ginger have arrived. Oh, great. Huh? What the hell are you doing here? Patches motions to the chain attached to his neck. Oh, right. How could I forget? Coco, what's going on? News about the zombie dogs? Yes, we were just at Kimono Woods, and... Ginger, you're alive? Hey, we're getting to that! Oh, so sorry. Coco sighs. We don't have much time to prepare. I'll start at the beginning. Coco pounds on the door of the Elite Magic Club. This is the third time you knocked. I don't think anyone's in there. Trust me, they're in there. They always spend Sunday morning prepping for fan meetups. N not that I would know. I just heard from a friend who's a big fan of the club is all. Uh-huh. Jeez, if only we had some way to face through the door and unlock it! Coco elbows Ginger. Her elbow faces right for her body. I'm not exactly tangible. Well, at least phase your head in and see what they're doing. Ginger sticks her head through the door. She's face to face with a very scared, hairless cat. Er, uh, could you open the door, please? Ah! Uh, dog! Dog? 
Whiskers opens the door. Wait, it's just a cat. Oh, dog. Ginger seems to have hidden in a wall at the last second. Uh, yeah. It is I, Coco Grimwalkin, member of the talented Grimwalkin House of Magic Cats. Pleasure to meet your acquaintance. Coco holds a paw out. The tall Siamese looks shocked. Grimalkin? Whoa. I'm Whiskers Wickian, vice president of the elite magic club. You can call me Whisk, though. Oh, no. What? Oh, it's just... Uh, the, the vice president is kind of... Angel, can you speed up the interruption a little bit? He reminds me of Patches, is all. Yikes. Ah, so you've heard of my family. Glad to finally meet someone with good taste in witches. Huh? Witches? I had no idea you were witches. I just know your name from that white cat, Angel. He's a real cutie. Is that how he reminds you of Patches? Angel and Patches are dead silent. Coco whacks Sparky on the head as punishment for interrupting. So, did Angel send you here to get my number or something? <laughs> Just kidding. Unless... Uh, no. I have a favor to ask, President Mittens. Oh, sorry, you're a bit early for the fan meetup. No, no! I heard they could heal the dead! Oh, you're one of those. Well, they can't heal. Never could. I think you'd better leave. Now. Whiskers tries to shoot Coco out the door. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Lives are on the line. Look, I don't care. You got to go. C come on. You've had to have seen him around the forest here, right? A thousand zombie dogs? Dogs? <laughs> Man, fuck dogs. I can't believe you're bothering me with... Wait, a thousand zombie dogs in the kimono woods. You're behind that. Huh? <laughs> no, of course not. Me? Kill a thousand zombie dogs? I just kept running into them in the woods, and I felt really bad for them. And I figure if Mittens could help them, then that'd mean that they could all go home. I mean, are they totally annoying as they are now? They're brain dead, have no sense of personal space, stink up the forest, and are a total tripping hazard. They're like that when they're alive. But, but at least they have the mental capacity to stay off cat territory. Hmm, I suppose it was a pain having to blast through them on the way to school today. Mitt! President Mittens, who had been very intently listening on the conversation, walks over. You don't have to yell, I'm right here. This sorry excuse for Halloween decoration wants you to heal a bunch of dumb dogs. I heard. The answer's no. Well, you heard the cat. Get out. Uh-huh. Wait, please! Look, you've wasted enough of our time. It would be easier to just kill the zombies than bring them back to life. One thousand less living dogs is one thousand less potential cat maulers. If you're going to get in the way of cat prosperity, then I don't think you're suited to be here. In fact, I can make it so a disgusting dog lover like you isn't permitted anywhere near this school. Whisk looms over Coco. But wait! Ginger rises from the ground between Coco and the others. A uh, dog? What? I I'm sorry, I... A burst of energy spirals towards Ginger. The energy dissipates. She's managed to absorb it with her own magic. No, 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 no dogs. We have a strict no, no, no dog policy in the premise. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to break your rules. 
This is all my fault. I was the one who asked Coco to help me after... After my magic backfired and turned these dogs into undead zombies. Please don't punish her for my recklessness. Wait, wait, wait. You zombified these dogs? But only cats can use magic. Unless she's got cat blood in her lineage. Gross! I'm s sorry. I don't know how I gained these abilities. All I know is I don't have the power to fully revive the dogs. If we don't get your help soon, the dogs will rot and fall apart. They'll become unsalvageable. Cats truly are our last hope. Ugh. So you found one dog that knows her place. I used to say the other dogs will be pliable once we heal them. Okay. Okay what? I'll heal them. What? Really? Mince, thank you! I do, however, have one condition. Let me guess. They asked for your eternal servitude. Oh my, no! I did offer it, but that's not what they wanted. They want us to prove that cats and dogs can get along. R really I'm friends with lots of cats. All of Hug's patches. I am not a fucking cat. This is the plan. We're hosting a communal school day at Hachiko High School, where cats and dogs will attend classes together. We'll have to round up the least brain-dead zombie dogs, which means Ginger will have to use her magic to hold their bodies together like she is for Patches right now. All of them? Isn't that a bit straining? <laughs> I'll manage. Everyone here besides Patches will help supervise. Huh? Besides p Patches, why? He's going to stay at your house chained up. We can't risk anything going wrong here. No! All of howls. Sparky almost starts howling with them, but holds it back. Patches has been good since my birthday party. It's only been like a day and a half since your birthday, Olive. Yeah, and he hasn't hurt me since he got that collar on. There's no risk of him hurting anyone, and if this is about everyone getting along... Isn't it wrong to single Patches out? Ugh, stop being wholesome, Olive. Seriously? I don't even want to see this cat-dog freak show of yours. I can have fun being chained up at home. Coco, we can't leave him chained up at home. Fine! Everyone here will help supervise the classes, as long as Olive keeps Patches on a tight leash. Sparky politely puts his paw up. Coco nods at him. Won't it be controversial to have a dog keeping a cat on a leash on a day where cats and dogs are supposed to be equals? Ah, all right! How about we just let Patches run free and he can attend classes like a normal cat? And we'll just assume he won't somehow brutally murder someone and ruin everything! Yeah! Hey, with that collar on, he can't do anything besides annoy the crap out of anyone, right? I don't see the harm. <sighs> as long as he doesn't talk to me. Then it's settled. Whisk and Mitt gave us until tomorrow, so let's get organized! Sparky's paw shoots up in the air. Uh, what now? You didn't explain how Ginger got her body back. Oh, right. I just asked Mint to heal Ginger as proof that they could actually do it with the little remains of her body. They were weirdly secretive about it and made me leave the room. And Ginger won't tell me what went on. Well, it's a spell that's been in their family for generations. It's highly sought after. So I won't speak of it out of respect for them, and also because they said they'd kill me if I did. All I'll say is, Mitt can't heal. They just know someone who can. <laughs>